Our next speaker this morning is uh, Frank Vigné. Uh, I know you all know him. Uh, he's the technical director of the French Triathlon Federation. And I asked him about the highlight of his athletic career, and he said winning the uh, 2003 Nice World Cup. Uh, that's in terms of competition. In terms of training and Testing, he said the highlight of his career was impressing our colleague uh, Christoph Hauswirth with um, a cycling test in which he says, he claims <laughs> to have pushed 500 watts. But I'm not sure I can believe that. <laughs> Frank Bignet. Merci, uh, Thank you, Joel, for the presentation you made of the presentation of Simon's career. I had the luck of uh, being able to spend time with him and I definitely you know, felt that what you said struck a chord with me. You were able to highlight how, as a coach, you accompanied his singularity, how you were able to help and accompany Simon. Um, Simon. I'm going to talk about the Federation and perhaps the, it's more complex, but um, you know, you, there, you took a certain road with Simon, and my role within the Federation is to see how a Federation can position itself to accompany all these singularities. Well, the administration of the French Triathlon uh, Federation is simple it's to go for the gold. That means that we are trying to help each athlete find his road to success. I want to recall that this is, of course, with respect for the integrity of each athlete, but in a responsible and respectful way. That is, yes, we're going for medals, but not at any cost, or not at all cost. The uh, earlier images give value to a uh, federation. They show what you see, the results at the competition, and they show the work that's been done by everyone. To reach a goal means you have to let go of it. It's a consequence and not a goal in itself. This applies to the athletes as well, and the coaches as well as all those in the athletes' environment. This strategy has to be well thought through and structured in order to make the results ongoing so that they the uh, athlete can continue to have and enjoy such results. So this is the dynamic of our federation. We want to continue to have good performance. So we have to give up certain uh, performances. We also give up on the idea of always, you know, being an alibi. Alibi means the justification of, uh, of not such a great performance and you often hear this when there's a debriefing with the, the athletes they give explanations which ultimately do not lead them to call themselves into question they say well it's the environment my swimming my swim was not great because i had to wear a wetsuit and i'm not good at that although we all know that triathlon is about adaptation and we have to be able to respond and react to many different situations so this is part of our training preparation defeat is like it becomes a sanctuary so when we talk about uh, participation it is well you know for example we hear athletes saying I'm happy I'm satisfied I'm at the beginning of the uh, championship. I've received, you know, my grant. I've received my equipment, etc. Now, participating in such a conference is a f is not such a finality in itself, an end in itself. It is the expression of their performance. One of the stakes is to try to get rid of the word participation altogether from our vocabulary. Performance is when you're trying to bring together all the criteria for success. What must I do every day to succeed? I think that there are four qualities which are necessary. Joel 
mentioned almost all of them. The first is emotional stability. How can I be involved in time? How can I be consistent in my training? Then this is whether I'm successful or I have a failure. I have to always go back to training. I do not need a long period before I put a process in place and act on it. The second quality is commitment. I think that this was definitely one of Simon's strengths. He was enthusiastic and honest about the effort that he was able to make. And then another quality is trust in yourself and in others. And the last quality is ambition. Why? Because it uh, enables you to accept the price you have to pay for the ambitions that you have on a daily basis. So the victory, that is a reflection of this will to always take this chance to give your all, risking that you'll win or lose. The Federation would like to work on these two last, which are performance and victory. These four types of dynamic are for athletes and the Federation permanent choices. They can change and evolve over time, over time somewhat in a qualitative way. I will draw a parallel between the world of sports and the world of business. In France, I don't know how it is elsewhere. Often, the sports world wants to give management lessons to the business world. We give them these recipes for success, supposedly. We are promoting what is exceptional and even magic, whereas, in fact, all this has a real reason for being. So what if we were to think differently? How can the business world, which is a competitive world, what can it? the business world teach the sports world. In the business world, many studies show that where you have the greatest growth, you have the greatest innovation. Innovation is the will to seek out constant improvement. Innovation has a direct consequence to increase your competitiveness, your level of performance, and therefore put you on the road to success. So how do we favor or facilitate, foster innovation in an organization? You have to reduce rigidities. You have to leave room to maneuver, to create, to uh, be contributing, irrespective of the hierarchy. And with your uh, colleagues, you have to, your athletes, you have to try to help them take initiative, be independent and be creative. On a daily basis, this means that everyone will be happy to do things. There will be lasting motivation. There will be trust in others, which will be greater than if it weren't that way. So you, these are the conditions you need in order to create conditions for success. Why would this be so different in the sports world? How can we ensure that within a federal structure we will have innovation for success? A federation must have lasting excellence with three uh, visions, short, medium and long term. Long term will become the short term. When after Beijing 28, Rio seems far away because London will come before it, then four years later, Rio is already just the following day. So a federation must bear in mind that thinking of the next games just after the end of the games that have just taken place is already too late. That means we need to have human resources in place and everything set up. The, uh, in 2015, we, the French Federation has to know who will be going to Tokyo 2020 and who will perhaps be participating in Paris 2014. The Federation must create conditions of emergence performance. It has to facilitate and foster the athletes' uh, program and not inhibit a person. That it has to have very specific structures. And I know that there are some Swedes in the room. 
Gazen Ardan was an Olympic uh, medalist in London, even if uh, he had moderate means. Stronger federations should be inspired by this. We have to um, be an investor in the process. The athlete is the main driver of the project. I choose my project, I have it, I surround myself with the people I need, I choose my road, and how fast I will be developing this project. Vesa Luis in 20, 2008 was a world champion. After in 2009, he had to try to build back up. And in uh, 2015, he was third in the world. And it was up. It was he who decided to accelerate things. He was the pilot of his own project. Another example at the Federation. After the London Games, I asked Davidos, who had finished fourth, what the strong points of the federal project were for the Olympic Games. And he said, freedom. The field that they, he did not feel any uh, suffocating structure or framework as it had been in the pa past. So I reminded him that there was a federal framework, but it was purposely flexible. And the others had said that they felt something that was the base was the uh, trust in the relationship. Freedom doesn't mean doing what I want to do all the time. It means to give the, the athletes the freedom to choose their road. To feel free, you have to be able to integrate the uh, rules of the house. This gives commitment and uh, self-confidence to the athletes and helps them be successful. Second step of the federal project was to promote performance. Promoting performance means aligning the individual ambitions of the athlete with those of the federation. In 2009, we totally rewrote the selection policies. We redrafted them completely. We wanted to have a new federal expectation to be ambitious, yes, but also to set a course that would be viable and doable, feasible for our athletes without being guided only by numbers. We did have to take this into account when we would select the athletes. We had to stop believing in the miracle of the big days. So quality, of course, is the best guarantee of success. A quick example to, let's say, in World Series finish first and second is several times is a very good way to ensure that we have somebody who could potentially bring some medals. And this is true for men and women. You have to uh, leave the category before it gets you, takes you out of your project. This is among the elites. The course chosen by the uh, Federation was to be among the top eight in the big championships in Europe. And in its first um, implementation, this meant that by 2009, we had uh, reduced the number of athletes that had been selected. This made it possible to concentrate our resources on our athletes and therefore better mobilize them. Before 2008, the selection process was very French because the, the international um, federations quota was always full. And these quota could have become a, an end in itself. So most of the athletes compare themselves to other Frenchmen, French people instead of uh, going for an international medal. So the Federation repositioned its ambitions. The quota, therefore, becomes a, a reflection of the policy and not an, an objective in itself. It has happened to me in 2011, where I had no uh, women going to the junior championships in Beijing. The, the following year, we had a champion and two 
the, uh, two years later. And in the even test in Rio, for Rio, there were no uh, women had been chosen. We had some triathletes among the men. Not selecting an athlete does not mean that we do not trust that athlete. It just means we're reminding the athlete that the level expected is not, has not yet been attained, and so we have to take measures in order to redress the situation. This whole idea of um, a collective uh, approach, and we have replaced that by this identified athlete's approach. So, because uh, we don't want to always reduce the uh, level by always thinking of the collective. And I had gone through this experience in 2005. I was asked then to create a um, group, but I said that this is perhaps not relevant and that it would be better to create a certain dynamic with younger di uh, triathletes. Um, and I did not win at the time. I was not uh, succeed at the time. But this was for me an experiment. I got to know the triathletes and understand their needs. Today, we have two modalities to identify our athletes, what we call the IATE. It is an identification and um, athlete support system for people who are from 13 to 19. The athlete can refuse to be part of this, and if they still have the markers, they can be selected. On the earlier slide, I talked about rules that have to be integrated and this is one of the goals of this mechanism. I'm trying to facilitate and foster uh, independence. And then the other part is a classification level where we look at their results nationally and internationally to give us some landmarks and see how they go from the youth to the elite cate uh, categories because our federation has to realize that there can be different ways of evolving and we every day have to remind ourselves are that performance must always be what guides our decision we have to support singularity by considering each athlete unique it means prom promoting a joint effort within the various services. It means understanding the individual in his or her given context and also respecting the various organizations involved. No, now to give you, um, let's say, a model, the Federation has gone from a hierarchical organization to an organization that works in a cooperative way. The Federation was um, well came into being in 1989 and the sports ministry wanted very quickly to us to have um, permanent structures so in 2001 greater resources were given to triathletes if they were to uh, work in this federal structure in 2001 the best tri triathletes had to only work with one, with a single federal structure. And so this is what we were saying to our triathletes. You are the players in your project. We are trying to create a high performance structure. We are going to financially, te technically, and uh, psychologically be behind you. With, with coaches and with a club. And I would recall that these training centers are one tool, but not only the, the only tool. And sometimes the uh, athletes feel that they, uh, you know, they are not taking charge of this project. The project always remains theirs. We always have to understand the context. Each athlete has to validate his own choices. So to put it simply, apart from the place we've been given in a system, we have to accept that no one belongs to anyone else and that personal choices are easier to shoulder. 
So the athletes have to own their ideas and understand them well. Everyone can bring instruments to, into play. We can create things, listening to each other. A good dialogue is important. That way we can use these tools optimally. Now, I would like to thank the um, researchers here at uh, INSEP, especially Christophe Houseworth and Yann Lemeur. You have to build networks to try to come up with solutions to uh, triathletes' problems. I could give you dozens of examples, but here are a few specific ones to look at how we can help and support the singularity of athletes. Sandra Levenez, who was a world champion in duathlon in 2014, who's training in in the western part of France in Brittany, and then Stephanie Denaz, who's in Montpellier, where she has camps, and she she uh, is in the in Prémenant in the Jura to prepare for the ski championships. Dorian Conanx, who is a world champion in 2013, and is a hopeful for 2020 and 2024, who's working with Raphael Manot. And this was, his efforts were, um, his efforts were recognized and he integrated this, um, this program. He even built a pool in his backyard to optimize training. He participates regularly in these uh, working camps with Nicolas Becca, Audrey Merde, world champion in 2015, training has been training with Stephanie Delenas. After training in a, in a training center and a high-level project has been built for triathlon with her, and we're happy to be working with her at the Federation. Leonie Perriot, the second of this world champion, is working uh, on the same distance and is working in, with with her club in Poissy here in the re Paris region. Raphael Netouya in 2014 has is working and training in Nice with a coach and has become part of this IATE uh, framework. Pierre Lecor, a ch world champion in 2013, began triathlon in 20 th uh, 2009 and was part of the French team for the European and World Championships where he was 15th. After his um, time trials in the running and swimming, um, in Montpellier, another path was uh, chosen. He was accompanied by Tony Pelé, who had been a European champion and world champion as well. Jeanne Le Her, who is um, a champion in the in the mixed event, training in Metz and has been from her uh, from a very young age. She began to be part of the IATA, um, IATE since the age of 13, and she was able for the first time to uh, win the title in Hamburg as a team. Finally, today, our Vincent Louis, who is our flag bearer, who was at a training center before joining a club to then create his own structure in Reims. After the London Games, this person has also been recognized by the sports minister and now works with Maximoto in swimming and someone else for running. The Federation validates all of this organization. It's to generate performance. That's the principle. I often am told some systems are more fragile than others. I don't share that point of view. All organization is fragile because they're based on uh, human relations. But I think human relations are a strength. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank all French coaches for their daily commitment. No system must be seen as better than another. 
because triathletes during their work can rely on these various systems. The objective of the Federation is not to be opposed to them, but to create cooperation. In other words, it is the uh, athletes who give legitimacy to the structure and not vice versa. Strengthening and um, helping this singularity means we have to be vigilant. We have to ensure that the individuals in the group are taken into account. We have to know what they want, what they wish, and what can the group give them. You, have, you must not always be expecting things from others. You have to also try to overcome your own beliefs. What does that mean? It means finally to agree that and accept not to be always right and to listen more. You always have to be aware and see when the timing is right. So all of these things are about deciding, making the right decision. And to uh, conclude, to help you understand the mission, vision we have of the Federation, on the 15th of June 2002, a, a young guy seems to be heading toward victory. Who is this? triathlete who seems to exude such strength, it's Laurent Vidal. He's just 18. What's his story? Since the age of nine, he had been training with his um, father-in-law, or, or rather his stepfather. After graduating from high school, he goes to a center in uh, Montpellier, and at 22 in 2006, he goes to Autun, and this, he said never again. That was what he said on that day. In the winter of 2006, 2007, and changed his athletic project, his relationship with his coach changed, and basically he became a, a, an advisor. And in 2007, he came in um, seventh, in, and year after year, he will have the intelligence to always call himself into question, to question what he's doing as he evolves. After the, the uh, disappointment of 2008, he took charge of his training, and together with Laval and the Federation, he trained and finished fifth in London. Before the French team staff, um, we have always had agreements, but we were always listening to him. Have, we had full trust in him. He was able to find his road. And as a high-level athlete in 2014, the Federation continued to accompany him and help him in his new role as a coach. He would have, he was and would have continued to be a great coach. So we have a great strength in us. We just have to let people develop their strengths. And maybe we have to stop trying to think for other people. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I think we have time for a couple of quick questions because uh, then we will have the round table after the uh, coffee break and poster session and we will have another opportunity to ask questions to Frank. Um, maybe a, an aside question on, on this topic but it's very important in, the, in this moment and it's very important for me to listen from, uh, from, from the French team. Eh? How was uh, the impact, if any, of the results on the mixed team relay in 2015? Well, for all federations today, this mixed relay can be a medium-term way of getting into the Olympic program. We have to see how we create this race dynamic, how we maintain the contact with the head of the race. So we are basing ourselves on individual strengths, because even if it's in the uh, same race, it's complex. So when we take the time to compare 
at different championships at the European level, the time trials of the juniors with the elites. We have juniors in this 20-minute race that go as fast as the elites. So we simply have to trust them and then we have to compose the teams to ensure that each athlete is in the best conditions. That's why, for example, on the composition of the relay in Hamburg, we had chosen that Jean Le Air start the relay because his only goal was to maintain contact. And the goal of each of the athletes is to maintain contact. That is what's specific to relay, because this is not really uh, how individual athletes think. You ha you want to, uh, you know, surpass yourself, but then you say to yourself, "Well, I would not have been able to do this just for myself." But the idea of doing it for others made me able to do this. So. It's not just to see how other teams will be composed, but to always maintain this contact. And that's how we base our decisions to select the team. You always have to put yourself in the conditions and know that you will be able to win. And if you know you can uh, count on Vincent Louis, who is not the, the biggest blabbermouths among the Federation athletes, but he's able to rally people together. That lends a lot of weight to the strength of the team.